people had the honor to be able to understand transcendence through the path of disciplic succession. However, in the present age, people have no interest in the disciplic succession. Instead, they have invented many paths of logic and argument. This individual attempt to understand the supreme transcendence calling the ascending process is not approved by the Vedas. Let me stop there. Oh. Hmm. The absolute must descend from the absolute platform. He is not to be understood by the ascending process. The holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is a transcendental vibration because it comes from the transcendental platform, the supreme abode of Krishna. Because there is no difference between Krishna and his holy name, the holy name of Krishna is as pure, perfect, and liberated as Krishna himself. Academic scholars have no entrance by means of logic and other argument into the understanding of transcendental nature of the holy name of God. The single path in understanding the transcendental nature of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is the chanting of these names with faith and adherence. Such chanting will release one from designated conditions arising from the gross and and subtle bodies. In this age of logic, argument, and disagreement, the chanting of Hare Krishna is the only means of self-realization. You want me to say something? Okay. <coughs> so this paragraph talks about the glories of the holy name of Krishna, how the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it is said, it destroys uh, all ill effects of Kali. Kali Kalmashanashanam. Uh, Kali Kalmashanashanam. What is that verse? Iti Shodashakam Nam Nam. Kali Kalmashanashanam. Iti Shodashakam. These 16 words, it is said, it uh, eliminates all ill effects of Kali. Generally, ill effects of Kali means. We are affected by greed, lust, anger. These are all you know, qualities that we all inherit by the modes of material nature. So by chanting this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, it purifies our heart, it purifies our mind, it purifies our intelligence. And then the seed of bhakti, which is pure devotion, is uh, established into our hearts. So by the beginning of any transcendence, the beginning of any spiritual practice starts with this chanting of Hare Krishna Mahavad. Because this is what Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, he came 500 years ago and he gave us this chanting of this Hare Krishna Mahavad. How in the age of Kali, <coughs> Kali Kale Nam Rupe Krishna Vatar, Nam Hoite Hoi Sarva Jagat Nishtar. How in the age of Kali, Krishna appears in the name of his, in the form of his name. So Krishna, he is absolute. He is non-different from his name, from his pastimes, his form. So especially in the age of Kali, it is said Krishna takes an avatar again, like Krishna came when 5,000 years ago, right? When Mahabharat was uh, fought, so Krishna came personally and he gave this wonderful uh, knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, you know, you're all familiar with. So again, 500 years ago, he comes again as Lord Chaitanya. So this is a very hidden incarnation of Krishna. Even many Indians don't know this, but it's very prevalent in Bengal, you know, because that's where he appeared. And he showed by his personal example, Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, he showed us how we can actually become pure, how we can actually become pure devotees of Krishna. He comes... Krishna comes in the mood of his devotee. How to, like Krishna, he wanted to experience what his devotees feel about him so attractive, especially Radharani. So he comes in that bhakta bhav, you know, pure devotee. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is showing by his example. Krishna is showing. Sometimes we f think that, oh, 
spiritual life is so difficult, it's so hard, it's not for us when we are young, <laughs> right? Especially in India, we, our parents always tell us, oh, no, 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 why you have to do this now? First you get married, have children, when you become 60 years old, then you practice it. <laughs> this is what our parents tell us. But no, life, uh, death is very uncertain. So Prahlad Maharaj, he was a young boy. He was like, what, five, six years old? So he's saying, he's telling all his friends who were also little boys. So he's telling all his friends, when is the time to serve Krishna? When we are young, we, you know, when we are children, we waste our time in playing around with, you know, different toys and different things. And when we are young, we get married and we become so absorbed in working on the computers. <laughs> you're so busy working seven days a week, six days a week. And you're so busy serving your children, serving your, you know, wife, serving your, taking care of your family. And then, you know, so much time is wasted, you know, there's no time to think about Krishna. And then when we get old, you can hardly hear anything, you can hardly see anything. So when is the time, really, to serve Krishna, to understand Krishna? So Prahlad Maharaj, he's saying, he's a little boy, you know, he's talking about this knowledge, this gyan. So he's saying, now is the time to uh, practice Krishna consciousness. And for us, whenever we come in the association of devotees, whenever we come in touch with devotees, like Shravananda Prabhu, he is so wonderfully making this arrangement for all of you to come together and glorify and learn about Krishna. Because death is again, you know, very padam padam yad bipadam yatisha. Every step there is a danger. You never know when there will be a nuclear attack from somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> it will be all finished. Right. So it's right. so important thing is to be prepared. You know, why should you wait till last minute? You know, you're all intelligent IT people, right? So <laughs> why should you wait till last minute, right? So this is what I asked myself when I was 20. I was going to college. I. Huh? They are very right. familiar. They have a lot of backups, right. disaster recovery, and all these. Right. Things. You have you make so many arrangements to make sure you your data are not lost, and you know you have backup plans and three backups, two backups. So we also, so why not invest some time in in your eternal future, real future, which is to uh, realize and understand our relationship with Krishna, because only by having a relationship with God, Krishna, we can actually become happy. I mean, we are all travelers in this material world. Today you may be staying in this apartment, tomorrow in another apartment, but at some point we have to vacate this apartment. So these bodies are like different you know, vehicles, different apartments we inherit in our due course of time. So the purpose of life, human life is actually so Bhagavatam is saying, what is the purpose of human life? Bhagavatam is not just some scripture, you just, we just read it through for some ritual sake. No, it is for understanding and, and realizing what is the purpose of human life. So the purpose of human life, it is said, is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, Adhokshaje. So that is a purpose, and it begins with chanting of the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna, Krishna Hare, Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare, Hare, Hare Ram, 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 Ram Hare, Hare Hare. This also talks about ascending process and descending process, how knowledge is it can be accepted in ascending way. Ascending process means the scientific way. There's a process of, the scientific process of ascend knowledge is ascending process, like how you, one scientist comes and he creates a theory and then he does some research. Another scientist comes and he refutes his theory and comes up with another theory. So this ascending process, we see the knowledge is always changing. But descending process, knowledge never changes. We can see even today, 5,000 years from now, is the still it's the same Bhagavad Gita because it's, it's, an, it's passed down from you know descending process. So the knowledge in the process of when it's descending down back, it's original. It never changes. But ascending process is always changing. Today is one theory, tomorrow another theory. Today you have one 
iPad and tomorrow we'll have another <laughs> iPad, iPhone, and in this way it's all constantly changing. But descending knowledge, when it's accepted in descending order, then it's perfect because it originates, it goes to the source, which is Krishna. So Krishna, God, he is all perfect. So when we rely on the descending process, then we won't get cheated. But if we rely on ascending process, which is coming from imperfect beings like us, the scientists, you know, they're ordinary people, and they, if we accept their process of knowledge, then we will get cheated. We'll get, like Darwin's theory was relevant, you know, 20 years ago, but today it's not. So material knowledge is like that. You know, it's descend ascending. It's always changing. But spiritual knowledge is when accepted in the descending order, going back all the way to Krishna. Of course, you don't want to just accept it from anyone or anybody, but we have to see that lineage is going back to Krishna himself. Then it's bona fide, then it's, uh, uh, how you say, it's authentic, and that knowledge, if when accepted, will have more faith, will have more uh, satisfaction, and we can actually be properly guided into this process of spiritual life. Otherwise, you know how India is. There's so many babas and so many societies. If you go, there's temples everywhere. There's spiritual institutions everywhere. So this is the contribution of Srila Prabhupada. He, he contributed so that he wrote these books. He translated these books. So people like us who have some education, we won't get cheated by so-called spiritualists out there. So therefore, we take guidance from Srila Prabhupada, his books, his teachings, and we can see how a uh, tree is judged by its fruits, right? So we can see by Srila Prabhupada's contribution, we see so many people all over the world, every town and village, this uh, process of Krishna consciousness is practiced. Do you need a chair? Right? So this is how we know that this process works. Thank this process chair. is very authentic because we see the results. Just like anything, right? You, it's any scientific process, you get, you do an experiment, you get a result, and you know, yes, it works, right? So similarly, this bhakti, Krishna consciousness, uh, Krishna bhakti is very scientific. It's been researched, it's been, in, it's been already practiced, and if we practice, we'll get the results also. So this is a great contribution of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. And we are all very blessed today to be here together, and we are able to hear from his books, from his teachings, and we must try to apply it in our own practical life. And by doing so, we will become free from all these unwanted qualities that we carry, and how we sometimes fight with each other, husband and wife, they have arguments, they have quarrels, then there is problems, and there is divorce, and you know, so many problems come in. They all come in because everybody is centered around me, I, me, and mine. But if we put Krishna in the center, then everything changes. Then everything becomes harmonious. Everything becomes very pleasant. Because then it's not just about you. It's about the other person. How to serve the other person. How to serve Krishna. Because when you serve Krishna, then you want to serve everyone. You want to become a servant of your wife. You want to become a servant of your husband. You want to become a servant of your children. So there's no question of lording over. So that dominant, you know, the tendency to dominate, tendency to lording over comes because we are very affected by the contaminations of this material nature. Contaminations of passion, goodness, ignorance, generally passion and ignorance. And, uh, our, and the greed, lust, anger, these, all these things that come from that mode of passion and ignorance. So to transcend these modes, to come to that level of pure goodness, not just goodness, but pure goodness, then we have to take through some process of spiritual life, some process of uh, chanting and thinking and remembering about Krishna. And it starts with this Hare Krishna mantra. If we can just do that, then we can uh, become very joyful, we can become very happy. Thank you. Thank Anybody you wants to add?